What's going on, beautiful people? This is Jerry Travis Smith, and we are marching ever closer to the Tandy 1000 SL sleeper build. Inside, if you've been watching, you'll know there is an iRig motherboard from China with a laptop chip Frankenstein onto a micro ATX motherboard. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is some of the 3D printing I did, and that involves a base plate to adapt the micro ATX mounting holes to the Tandy 1000 holes. And then I'm gonna show you some adapters I made that will allow me to hook into the rear I.O. port of the Tandy 1000 and use modern extender cables for USB and HDMI. And finally, we have the power supply situation, which didn't really go as I wanted it to because I have an adapter for it so I could mount it in a certain location in the case, but it's just not gonna work, at least not to my satisfaction. So I'm gonna have to redo uh, that and uh, configure it a little different to get it to fit, and you'll see how all that went down. So this was more of a test run of all the parts to see if I was in the general ballpark. You'll see that there's some things I need to change, but overall, for a proof of concept, I think it went pretty well. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So what do we got going on here? Well, it is, hopefully, the adapter that will adapt a micro ATX motherboard to a Tandy 1000 SL case. Look at that, that looks pretty nice. Let's get her off of there and I'll show you what I'm gonna do to it next. I know some people like to put screws directly into the plastic and there's nothing really wrong with that, but I wanted this to be a little more durable. And what I learned about was these inserts that go in certain size holes. They're made out of brass. See, uh, these right here are for M3 machine screws, which is what um, type of motherboard standoffs I'm gonna use. And then I have some more that are still in the package here for a 632nd hole, and those are the ones that are gonna interface with the Tandy holes uh, in that case. But basically what you do is you take your soldering iron and you get these tips that are made for whatever size and uh, it basically melts the plastic right down in the hole. Okay, so I think that's really cool. It's very, very durable. Um, the other adapters that I have made have those in them as well and you'll be seeing those soon enough one thing to note is whenever you're melting these in there, if say you had some support material in a hole and you couldn't get it out all the way, whenever you go to melt in the brass insets, um, it may clog the hole and you're, you're pretty much out of luck, it won't work. And here's the two kind of holes I have. Here we have the uh, M3 uh, metric size that the um, motherboard standoffs are going to go in and then right here we've got two of these 632nd holes that are 165 millimeters uh, away from each other and hopefully that'll be enough to get this motherboard sufficiently mounted in the case. Okay you can see that I inserted the M3 inserts no problem. Now the only thing left to do are the two 632nd inserts. And I didn't manage to get video of me melting these other uh, six in here because um, I'm using my phone and a little phone tripod because it's real uh, cramped down here where my 3D printer is and I can't get my big rig and tripod in here. So um, let me try to get you some footage with the 632nd standoffs uh, here and here 
regardless of the size of the insert, like I've got the M3 insert here, the knurling goes on the bottom when you push it in the hole because that's the part that will bite and have the most resistance to being pulled out. And as you can see, the top of the insert has a little smooth lip. So that's how you know the smooth part that you're going to actually put the um, iron down into to push. And see if I flip it over to the bottom, look at that knurling that's along the bottom and that's what gives it its strength and not being pulled out too easily. Okay, so there's my 632nd hole that I need to put a 632nd insert in. I'll get two of these out and they are slightly bigger than the M3, obviously, or maybe not so obvious, I don't know. But again, we wanna make sure all the knurling, or the bulk of the knurling is at the bottom. And there's a smooth ring at the top. Okay, my iron is already heated. So let's just put that bad boy right in there. And I'm a little bit away from this compared to when I was doing the M3 because of the camera angle. But I've got it going straight up and down. I'm just applying pressure. It's taking a little bit longer to heat up because it's a little bit bigger mass wise. Oh, and the reason it dropped down so far was that whenever I designed the 632nd holes, there is no plastic in the bottom. So you can see all the way through this hole and I can show you here, I think. See, you can see all the way through that one. So now with minimal camera readjustment, let's put in the second insert. But that is why I used my cardboard. There we go, that one dropped in as well. And that's perfectly fine because we're screwing directly into the case with that. So now, all I gotta do is get it installed in the case and see if it all works. So we've got a lot of work to do today on the Eric motherboard. And I'm gonna start out by giving it a nice cooling upgrade before we even put it in the case and try out that adapter. And we're gonna go with this Noctua NH-L9i low profile cooler. See how skinny that thing is? So that's great. It's going to really be an upgrade and will be super quiet and work so much better than the stock Intel um, fan. All right, so I got it lined up and flipped over. Got two corner screws in it. I gotta tell you, this is like the easiest cooler installation I have ever done. I really like this mounting method. Um, I've never actually had a Noctua CPU cooler before. So far, I am very impressed. But I've used lots and lots of Noctua fans over the years. Good stuff. What is that? A piece of, looks like, packing foam. <laughs> so glad to say goodbye to that Intel stock cooler. Nice. Let's see if it'll reach. It's going to be a tight fit. Oh, nice. Very, very nice. I don't know if you saw that on camera. Yeah, I guess I had a pretty good angle there. There is like 
<clears throat> no slack dancing around with this fan. Excellent. Very, very good. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a pretty handsome livery, if I do say so myself. Wow. So nice. So incredibly nice and sleek. Now let me make sure this ram's going to fit back in here, because it's awful close, but I think we'll be okay. Like a glove. Oh, yeah. All right, so here is that adapter that you saw in the earlier clip next to the 3D printer. There's the beautiful Tandy logo emblazoned in it. And you can see I did manage to get it in the case with um, the existing mount holes that was in this Tandy case here and up here. Now, it probably won't come across on the video, but it's off by about a millimeter. It needs to be, have about a millimeter more length from here to here. And so what I'm gonna have to do is just fix my model and print it again. And I'm not really happy with the black anyway, because even without like the, the way light hits it and stuff, it doesn't show up as well as it could. So I have a special treat for the livery of this thing. Um, so I did manage to get it in there though, and that's the important part for now. Okay, so now this is the very first time that I've actually tried to dry fit this. And you'll notice that I did put the brass standoffs in the brass inserts. I went with a standard M3 um, brass standoff. So I've got those in place. I'll put this one back. And in theory, this should bolt up just fine, but Anybody that's done any 3D printing knows with, that with tolerances as they are and such, it may not work. So the back of the motherboard needs to go here. So I'm going to put this in. Just like so. And I see that we've lined up on two of the holes. What about the others? Hot dog. I believe we're good. I'm not going to tighten all these up real tight at first because that's a nice easy way to give yourself a little wiggle room if your tolerances are off. Just a fuzz. That works with pretty much everything and thankfully it does with 3D printing as well. got to say, I'm, I'm pretty pleased. I hope this works out the way I wanted. And wouldn't you know it, I need one more screw. I thought we only needed five. There are indeed six. Now they're all in there. I can commence to tighten them up. All right. And there we go. I don't feel like that motherboard is going anywhere. Wow. That's so awesome. It worked. So you're probably wondering what my plan is to get the IO um, out of the machine so we have access to it. And that is going to be with these little 3D printed adapters I made. So here is the HDMI one, right? I printed that and put some more of those uh, M3 brass inserts in there. You can see those. And then I made it so that um, if you look down in there, there are two screws. I'm going to take this apart so you can get a look at it. I am going to have to do some of it off camera so that you cannot see. But I assure you, it's put together with some M3 screws. And I will show you uh, the 3D models that I made for this. So 
So there it is with the little top off that holds it on. See, goes in there like that. And then this top piece here is a little bit thicker than it needs to be. So it puts pressure on this little uh, HDMI extender. See, it's actually press fit in there pretty tight. Um, but you can pull it out, which is what I just did. And uh, so between that thing mashing on it and it being tied in there anyway, there ain't no way that it's coming out. And then I bolt this part on the front, goes through the standard uh, I.O. holes that would be in this case anyway. And I'll show those once I get this bolted up. So here's the back of the case and you can see that basically we've got the standard I.O. holes that would be there and here's for your your mic and your um, speakers and stuff and your keyboard and mouse. But I'm going to make use of these for HDMI and USB out of the case. I designed these so that they're five millimeters thick on the bottom. And the reason being is it's five millimeters from the base of the case here up to this lip. Okay, so it basically sits flush on the bottom. And I'm going to put the HDMI one over here. Okay, and we're going to use just M3 screws right in those little ears to hold it in. And the reason that the HDMI is going over here is that is the shortest little adapter cable there is out of this bunch. And that will allow it to uh, reach without having to buy a new cable. Otherwise, if the cable's long enough on the inside, it doesn't matter. So let me get this in here. Standard M3 screw, like I said. So there's one, I won't tighten it down all the way. And here's the other. And there we go. You can see that's a very, very sturdy connection. I'm like moving the table. This one is the two gang adapter that holds the USB uh, three ports. So, and I think with the inserts, when I pushed them in, I didn't push them in perfectly. So this one is a little cattywampus compared to um, the others, but it works fine. And it's a little bit screwed up looking, but I will fix that when we do the final put together after everything's kind of been dry fit, because that's the point of this, is to uh, just make sure everything's going to fit and stuff. And then we'll put the third one in. This one was actually the first one I designed and the top of it is a lot more elaborate. But then I realized there's not much sense in being so elaborate when this simple squared off design works just fine. It prints easier and everything whenever you don't have a lot of curves and all that. So, but hey, you live, you learn. All right. So after a bit of finagling, I got them in there. I had to take this, uh, the two gang one out and because this one's rounded and the way I designed it, it was the first one I made. So if I had it to do over with, I would not uh, have rounded that one. I may redo that one and make it squared off like the others. But uh, now that they're all in there, I'm going to show you what it looks like down inside of the case. All right, so here we are down inside the case. Here are the three adapters. You can see that one has some brass standoffs sticking up out of it because the screws on the brass standoffs, the M3 brass standoff screws, are a little bit taller than uh, the standard screws I use for the other two, and I designed this one to be too thick. So I think I will redesign that one before, you know, for the final assembly. But like I said, this is just a nice dry fit. So let's go ahead and plug these in and it goes something like this. 
I've got two HDMI ports, but I could put it in either one. And then the USB ports. This two ganger is going to go in the USB 3. And then, oops, that was not the two ganger. So there you go, the two gangers loaded up with the USB 3, and then this loner USB is going to go right here. in the USB 2.0 port. There's actually a USB port uh, that will not be, or actually there's, there's three more USB ports, two over here and uh, one more right here that will not be used. So, you know, um, if I wanted to, I could do an expansion um, out the expansion slot ports right here, but I'm not going to do that, at least not for now. All right, so there's that. Now, there's a few things I have not finished or figured out how I'm going to do it with the lid on. One is uh, I have to get the Ethernet, which is right here, out of the case. Uh, this does have built-in Wi-Fi or a, a place for a Wi-Fi module, so that's what I'm actually going to do first, and then I'll worry about um, getting the Ethernet out because we all know being hardwired in is just better. And also, to get power into the power supply that's going to fit uh, right in here somewhere, I don't know exactly where that's part of what we're doing today but the plan for that is I have this extender cable that uh, this part will oops this part will plug into the power supply and then this will be sticking out right here and I have to make an adapter to hold that in there nice and secure I haven't done that yet. And then the front panel of the top case, I have to make an adapter for a wiring harness. So that will be part two of the video is, is that. Um, but now I'm gonna go ahead and go get the power supply and let's give it a whirl. Okay, so the power supply I got ended up being this 300 watt uh, Silverstone uh, SFX. It's a pretty nice little unit, or seems to be anyway. And in order to secure it to the case, here's what I think I'm going to do is use this adapter that will go over the Silverstone. And then there is a, a 632nd um, mounting hole right up there. So I'm going to use the corner of this to hold that power supply in. Now, is that optimal? Uh, no, absolutely not, because it's only one point of contact. But I think it'll be okay in the case of this um, sleeper. After a great deal of finagling and trying to figure this out, here's what I came up with. Okay, in regards to the power supply. So. The case extender is going to have to extend back this way. And then uh, here's my 8 pin, which that's fine. I will have to get a 24 pin extender because the motherboard power is all the way over here. To secure this, I am going to um, 3D print. Uh, a bracket very similar to this one but uh, basically it's going to anchor on that raised up point that's right up here and out that hole that I popped that little plug out of right there 
So uh, the cable management on this is going to be very ugly. And that really does make me sad because, uh, you know, I really would like to have a nice looking sleeper, but given the space constraints I have in the equipment I chose for the build, that's just the way it's got to be. That's okay though. I'm not um, ever overly concerned with looks of things like this. So uh, yeah, that's just uh, one more um, challenge that I have, uh, that's just one more thing I have to overcome, but that's okay. So I'm going to end the video there. I will have to design the bracket for this so it can sit here and do that and the bracket will raise this up so that it's not so close to these pins on the motherboard. I also have to finish the bracket right here that will hold this IEC 13 connector in securely. I have to do the power switch bracket to hold the power switch and the lights and everything where they're supposed to go. I'm also going to redo the uh, Tandy mount plate under here that takes the Tandy case to the MATX standard so that it's spaced properly. So we've made a lot of progress. It might not look like we've done much, but uh, overall I'm pretty happy how far we got today.